course with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. G-Man Jimmy is eight years old. He is strong and he is bold. He can capture outlaws cause he knows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios, all right. The nourishing oat cereal that's shaped like little letter O's. The ready-to-eat cereal with a wonderful toasted oat flavor. What's more, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. That's right, each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. And these good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So try Cheerios, the famous oat cereal that needs no cooking. And soon you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! The big wagon train moved in snake-like fashion over the prairie. Get up! Get up there! Judd Moss, a gruff, weather-beaten man who was in charge of the train, rode a horse alongside the lead wagon, which was driven by his daughter, Jane. On the seat beside her was Judd's ten-year-old son, Douglas. Your Uncle Caleb, back at the store in Kansas City, told me about a masked man who rides a big white stallion out west. He catches outlaws and bad Indians and helps people, Uncle Caleb said. Oh, golly! I hope we see him sometime. Well, look, Shani, you mustn't go taking everything to heart that Caleb told you. He likes to amuse folks with tall stories. What Dad means, Doug, is is that stories like the one about the masked man that Uncle Caleb told you is sort of like uh, Mother Goose stories about people who don't really exist. Yep, that's right. That masked man is probably some sort of a legend out here, Doug. We don't want to meet mask hombres any more than we want to meet hostile Indians. Heavens, no. From what I hear, the Western outlaws are mean and vicious men. Oh, they don't scare the Lone Ranger. <laughs> well, I send her Doug's a stubborn youngster. Believing in that masked man in spite of what we told him. We'll see him someday, I bet you. <laughs> then you won't say I'm stubborn, Dad. Well, maybe, son, but I won't count on it. Hey, Jane, you better get those horses moving a bit faster. All right, Dad. Get up there. Get up. On the seat of the last wagon in the train, two men rode side by side. Jake Logan was a thin, wiry man, and his companion, Duke Thorne, was of stocky build. As they moved along, Jake was saying, Duke... If the wagon master, Judd Moss, knew we had rifles and ammunition in the boxes on our wagon instead of merchandise for a hardware store like he thinks, <laughs> he'd have a fit. Yeah. Does he know you've been out west before, Jake? Oh, no, he thinks I'm a tenderfoot. And you too, Duke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell me, how do we get the rifles to the Indians? Well, after we pass Fort Belknap, the Indians will raid the wagon train. Now, in the excitement, we'll break away and drive our wagon southward across the plains as if we're trying to escape the raid. When do we pass the fort? Late this afternoon. Now, after we stop for the night, a renegade named Muller will come and tell us of the chief's plan. The streaks of red paint on our canvas top up here will let the Indians know that we're with the train. 
And they'll be watching the trail. Get up! Oh! Meantime, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, rode along the Butterfield Trail west of Fort Belknap. The masked man was saying, Toto, Red Wolf and his hostile tribe are getting rifles and ammunition. So far, no one's been able to find out who's supplying them. Oh, that's not good. The colonel at Fort Belknap is very much concerned about it. The note he sent to the mission was a request that we try to locate the source and help catch the smugglers. You think maybe... Them bring in guns from East Kimasami? Yes. This territory is too far from the Mexican border for the guns to be brought in that way. Most wagon trains coming to Southwest go past Fort. Be easy for a Colonel to check for guns? I'm sure he does. Each wagon master is responsible for what comes through. Any one of them should know what each wagon carries. Maybe one uh, wagon master is crooked, Kimasami. Oh, that's possible. So pitch camp soon and use it as a base from which to do some scouting to see if Red Wolf's Indians are in this territory. Then when the next train comes through, we'll follow it. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. After a short stop at the port, the wagon train moved on until nightfall. Then the wagons were drawn into a circle and preparations made for the night. Jake and Duke waited until all were sleeping. They were sitting near their wagon smoking when they heard the expected signal. That must be Mala. Wait here and watch. I'll go over that grove where the signal come from. All right. That won't be long. <laughs> waiting for it. Now, what's the plan? Chief Red Wolf say him wait till wagons leave camp. Braves make rain on wagons hour after dawn. Good. Now, our wagon has red marks on the canvas top. We're at the end of the train. As soon as the raid starts, we'll turn off and head over the prairie. Mm. Chief, tell Braves them not shoot at wagon that go cross plain. Him say bring you to village. Sure. Duke and me will use the wagon horses to ride to the village with you. Now you go tell the chief that everything will be ready for him. Uh, me go now. Tell chief. The Lone Ranger and Toto had seen the wagon train on the trail and had followed it at a distance. When the wagon circled for the night, the masked man and Indian had camped nearby. They had stopped in some cottonwoods, and after making their horses comfortable, the two men sat in the darkness talking. Look, Kimasabi. Yes. Me see someone riding over slope. He's coming from the direction of the wagon train. Ah. Him Indian look like. We'll pick up his trail and follow him. A lone ranger and Tonto followed Muller cautiously. The Indian had disappeared over another slope of the rolling prairie, but the masked man and Tonto were not concerned about keeping him in sight. The bright moonlight helped them pick up his trail, and they moved at a leisurely pace. Toto, realizing that they too might be seen and followed, looked back as they rode over a rise, then spoke. Kimasabi. Yes? Feller and horse back in plain, him following. Yes, I see him, Toto. Leads his outline. There's some trees on slope. Maybe we stop there, wait for feller. Yes, that's what we'll do. We're over the rise now and out of his sight. Come on, Silver. Get him up the scout. The two men galloped to the trees partway down the slope and stopped in the shadows. Hold him, hold him. Hold him. Hold him. We'll stay in the saddle and wait, Tonto. Uh, him come over top of slope soon. There he comes now. Have your gun ready. We'll stop him and find out who he is. Uh, him getting close. We'll ride out and stop him. Come on, Tonto. Get up, scout. Hold it, Mr. and Reach. Hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Him, boy. Are you a wild Indian? What are you going to do? Don't be frightened, son. We won't hurt you. Why are you out here alone? 
Well, what's your name? I'm Douglas Moss. I came from the wagon train back there. I found an Indian who must have been spying on us. I sneaked away. We saw an Indian come across the plains. It's uh, dangerous for you to ride the plains alone, Doug. I wanted to see some Indians. Wild ones. Anyway, I saw Jake Logan, who has a wagon in the train, go into a grove when a coyote howled. He talked to an Indian there. When the Indian left, I followed him. Otto, that coyote howl must have been a signal. That right. That man, Jake Logan, will bear investigate. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one the happy, happy people have to say. Weedy, oh, weedy, send a do, 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 and okay. Okay. Yep, take Mickey Mantle, born in Oklahoma, star with the New York Yankees. From out west, where a man's a man, and what a man is Mantle. Say, Mickey's been eating Wheaties for years. Now listen. Here's another champion with plenty of zing in his swing. Zing! That's a service ace for champion Pancho Gonzalez, a native Californian. He hits them hard, he makes them swish, and in the morning enjoys his dish of Wheaties. Sure, lip smack and taste tickling, rib sticking good. And there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties, and you'll be do, 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 and okay. Okay. Now, to continue, noting that they were followed as they trailed the Indian Muller, the Lone Ranger and Toto waited in a grove until the rider came by. Then they stopped him and were surprised to learn he was a boy. Douglas Moss told them about Jake Logan's meeting with Muller, and the information seemed to mean a great deal to the masked man. He questioned Doug further. What do you know about Jake Logan, Doug? Oh, I don't like him much. He looks sort of mean. My father's a wagon master. And I heard Dad say Jake Logan and Duke Thorne must be sharp traders. Traders? Uh-huh. They're going to open up a hardware store out west, they said. They had a lot of big boxes of stuff in their wagon. Mm, that sounds strange, Kimasali. Yes, Tonto. Are the boxes all the same size, Doug? No, sir. I read some of the printing on the boxes once. Uh, one says axes, and another says shovels. And there's a couple marked picks. They were just the ones on top that I saw. Well, that's all very interesting. Otto, I still want to follow that Indian's trail. Uh, what we do with Boy? It may not be safe for him to return to the wagon camp right now. That fellow Jake realized Doug had seen him go to meet the Indian. He might harm Doug. Well, nobody saw me leave the camp. But Jake Logan might see you coming back. Otto, we'll take Doug along with us. We'll take him back to the wagon camp before dawn. Oh, gosh. You mean I'm to help you trail that Indian? Yes, Doug. All right, let's go. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Get up there. Half an hour later, the two men and the boy drew rein on the edge of a secluded valley. <laughs> Look in valley, came us up. Yes. Many Indians have camp there. The Indian we saw went there to report after talking to Jake Logan. That right. The wagon train's in danger. Tonto, we still have time before dawn. Ride to Fort Belknap and tell the colonel what we found out. He'll remember you. If he sends troopers, they may prevent a massacre and catch the gun smugglers at the same time. Let me go. What you do? I'll take Doug back to the wagon camp and warn them. Hurry, Toto. Oh, me hurry. Adios. Adios. Get him up, scouts. All right, let's turn back now, Doug. Come on, Silver. Get up there. Later at the wagon camp, Doug's father, Judd Moss, discovered that Doug was missing. He and his daughter, Jane, searched the camp but found no trace of him. Then Judd Moss found that his horse was missing. He approached a group of men who were around the campfire discussing the boy's disappearance. Hey, I just found out my horse is gone. That young rascal must have ridden away on him. Ah, wow, where would he go? Yeah, and why? It's dangerous for him to be alone on the prairie. Oh, sure. We must find him. Dad, you must do something. Well, it'll soon be done, Gene. I'll take a few of the men and try to trail the boy. He ought to get a good wallop when you do find him. But Doug wouldn't just ride away without a reason. I'm sure of that. But what reason could he have, Gene? I don't know. He's been talking about wanting to see wild Indians. Dad, 
You don't think You he... mean, do I think he suddenly got the idea to go look for some? Yes. Hey, maybe that's it, Jane. All right, get your horses, man, and be ready to ride with me. Uh... Judd Morse was preparing to leave the wagon camp with some of the men when one of them pointed across the prairie and spoke. Hey, Mr. Morse, yeah? look coming across the prairie. Hey, that looks like Douglas. Oh, it is, Doug. Daddy, stay. My thunder, that Umbre riding with him is masked. Well, maybe he should go between us and proud laws. Get your guns, men. We'll make him talk. I don't understand what Doug is doing with that masked man. Hold him, hold him. All right, reach, mister. We got you covered. Those guns aren't necessary. Dad, I'll tell you about him and what happened. Well, keep quiet, son. I'll talk to this mask, hombre. I never did trust anyone who covers his face. There isn't time for a discussion, Mr. Moss. I suggest you tell your men to keep the wagons in a circle. You mean they're fixing to start the wagon train and no mask, Cumbria? Dad, you've got to listen. You just have to. Dad, it won't hurt to listen to what the masked man has to say. Thanks, Miss Moss. Yeah, go ahead, then. Say your say, mister. But whatever it is, we won't believe it. But, Dad, he's the masked man Uncle Caleb told me about. Don't you see? Huh? The mask. The big white stallion named Silver and all. But, but Dad, Doug's right. Well, I'll be... Well, uh, must have been something to Caleb's stories after all. Uh, now, listen. A tribe of hostile Indians are camped not far from here. I think they'll raid the wagon train this morning. What makes you think that? A friend and I found signs that show the train has been followed by Indian scouts. Uh, we were told at the fort the last two trains went through without trouble. There'd be no reason why they'd attack this wagon train, Mr. Moss, unless you have rifles and ammunition in one of your wagons. Uh, Tommy Rutt, I checked every wagon in this wagon train. You have a man named uh, Jake Logan with you? Yep. Jake and his partner, Duke Thorne. They're hitching their team over yonder there. Did you inspect the contents of their wagon? I sure did. Even opened one of the boxes on the top. It was filled with pickaxes, so I didn't look any further. They figured to open a store for the west. Your son saw Jake Logan go to a nearby grove during the night after a coyote howled. Soon after, Doug saw an Indian right away, so he followed. That's right, Dad. Yeah, nonsense. Doug has a vivid imagination, that's all. The boy's been seeing Indians in his sleep. But I did see one. I did. So did Tonto and I. He rode across the plains from this direction. Well, I don't know. It, it's the word of a boy to... Holy mackerel, look out there. Vengeance! Easy, steady, Silver. Here comes the attack. Great day. Get your guns and take your places, men. Hurry! All right, Within a few minutes, the pioneers had taken their places near the wagons to ward off the attack. The Indians rode close, then began to circle the camp. The Lone Ranger was in the midst of the fray, offering advice and doing all he could to ward off the Redskins. He was busy firing at the encircling Indians when Doug Moss ran up to him, saying... Hey, mister, look over there! One of the wagons is pulling away from the circle! He must be stopped. Hey! That's Jake Logan's wagon. Fools. Jake Logan's, huh? He's heading toward the Indians. His wagon must be loaded with guns. Steady, Silver, easy. Come on, Silver! The Lone Ranger headed after the wagon Jake and Duke were driving. The wagon had pulled away from the circle and was heading out across the prairie. Faster, big fellow, faster! Come on, Silver! As the Lone Ranger started after the wagon, he noticed that the circle of Indians parted to let it through without seeming to bother the two men on the seat. He realized that he was in for trouble when he saw the circle close behind the wagon and some of the Indians were waiting to head him off. We must get through, Silver. Come on, big fellow. At that moment, when it seemed that his path was blocked by several mounted redskins, he heard a welcome sound. The troopers have arrived. Come on, Silver. When the bugle sounded, the Indians broke their line, then turned and started away across the plains with the troopers in pursuit. Gradually, the masked man drew closer to the racing wagon. A couple of bullets whizzed close. And he knew he'd been seen by Jake and Duke. He lifted his gun and fired. One of them wounded. Come on, Silver! A moment later, the Lone Ranger reached the swaying covered wagon. Then, swerving around the wagon, he cut in toward the horses' heads, swinging them suddenly to one side, even as Jake tried to take aim. The sudden turning of the wagon caused it to overturn. 
Oh, easy, steady. Dick Logan had jumped from the seat and rolled on the ground. The Lone Ranger leaped from the saddle. The two men grappled and swung blows at each other. Then, getting to his feet, the masked man dragged Jake with him. Get up, you. I'll fix you. Oh, try it. Put up. Go. You all right, Kimosabe? Yes, Toto. My troopers will bring in the Indians. Good. You arrived just in time, Colonel. This wagon was carrying rifles and ammunition for the Indians. Uh, Colonel, he's right. Look there, some of the boxes are broken open. Well, that's the reason the Indians attacked this train, Lieutenant. Hey, by Sunday, we owe you plenty, mister. Doug says your friend went for the soldiers. That's right. It's just like I told you, Dad. If the masked man hadn't come along, we'd all be dead by now. You may blame those two men, Jake Logan and his partner. I suggest they be tied up, Colonel. We'll take charge of them, sir. Good enough. Lieutenant. Yes, Mr. Sir. Moss, you owe a great yes, deal to your boy, Doug. He's a brave boy. And in his search for adventure, did his part in saving the train and exposing the gun smugglers. <laughs> well, I always knew Douglas would inherit some of the Moss courage. Oh, Dad. Don't forget you put it all down to just being bad when you found he'd left camp. Oh, golly. We like tell the kids back home about our great adventure. Your great adventure, Doug. Oh, they'll sure believe what Uncle Caleb says after this, too. When I tell him by you, sir. Dad was very hard to convince. It, well, not at all, she. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Moss, I'll detail someone to ride with your wagons as far as the next port. So I'm sure the danger is over. Yes, I think it is, too. But Tom and I'll ride on ahead of the wagon train just to make sure the way is clear. I know we'll all meet again. Of course. We'll always be glad to see you, mister. I'm sure you'll like the Far West. We need pioneers like you out here. Well, we'll start ahead now, Tano. Easy, steady, big fella. Adios. Goodbye. There goes one of the finest men I have ever met. We've heard about him back east, Colonel. What did Uncle Caleb tell you he's called, Doug? Oh, gosh. Don't tell me you forgot already. He's called the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording, Mondays through Fridays at this same time. <laughs>